Tony Opgard is graduated from Notre Dame and received his law degree at Antioch School of Law. From 1998 to 2001, he worked for the Mine Safety and Health Administration as, a, as an advisor to the Assistant Secretary of Labor. From 2001 to 2005, he worked for the Kentucky Department of Mines and Minerals, and he currently works as an attorney representing miners and their family. Thanks for the invitation to speak, Chairman Miller. And uh, You truly are the champion of the coal miner in the U.S. Congress, and we appreciate the work you're doing. I'm going to deviate from my prepared remarks. Um, we have a lot of outlaw coal operators in eastern Kentucky. What Scott is talking about is, is nothing unusual. It's not an aberration. We have some good operators, but we have a lot of operators. All they care about is getting the coal out, and they will do whatever it takes to get it out and disregard the laws. We have miners working right now as we speak in eastern Kentucky. This morning are working without ventilation curtains being hung. They're working under dangerous roof. They're working with electrical equipment being bridged out. That's bypassing the safety features. Um, it's commonplace. And most of those miners are afraid to complain, although there's a federal law granting them the right to refuse unsafe work. Because if they complain, they'll be told to get your dinner bucket and go on to the house which means you're fired. That's exactly what's going to happen to most miners. I'm proud to say I was Scott Howard's attorney in that case he was talking about. He got fired for refusing to bolt when his ATRS wouldn't reach the roof. That's the hydraulic shield that goes up against the mine roof and protects the roof bolting machine operator from roof falls. His ATRS wouldn't reach the roof, and he said he wouldn't bolt, and they fired him. And he did get blacklisted. I'm proud to be Melissa Lee's attorney. I'm representing four of the Kentucky Darby families as well as the survivor. That was another dog hole mine. There was no reason for those miners to die other than the fact that they were cutting corners on safety. The House Bill 207 that Melissa referred to was a law that we just had passed in Kentucky. It was signed by the governor last week. And it has a lot of provisions in there that exceed the requirements of the federal law. And those are some of the things we would like to see this Congress pass, some similar provisions. They're all common sense provisions that were based on accidents in Kentucky in the last two years. Um, they don't do so much uh, in terms of helping miners after a disaster. These are all provisions that help prevent disasters in the first place, help prevent accidents. So let me go over a couple of them. The first thing is in Kentucky now, we have six inspections per year. At this time last year, we had two in underground coal mines. The General Assembly last year, we got it up to three. This year, we're up to six. And four of those are complete inspections, two are electrical inspections. Uh, for the first time in Kentucky history, we have mandated electrical inspections. We would like the U.S. Congress to mandate six underground inspections per year in all, all coal mines in America. If you do nothing else, that's the best thing you could do for coal miners. The more often you have inspectors underground, the more likely it is that they will see unsafe conditions that could prevent, uh, that could cause an accident, either a fatal or a serious non-fatal, to try to prevent those accidents from occurring. We've been stuck on four inspections per year in the United States for the last 30 years. You need to have the will to protect miners, to allocate the money to protect miners, go up to bi-monthly inspections. It's the best thing that you could do. Some of the other provisions that we have in the Kentucky law, we're now requiring two METs, mine emergency technicians, on every shift, one of which has to be underground at all times. That stems from an accident in December of 2005 where we had a miner, both of his legs were severed in a mining accident. The Met underground panicked and did not treat him, and he bled to death. Had there been two Mets there, even one outside, his life would have been saved. Um, we had two miners killed in Harlan County in August of 05 while retreat mining, which is the most dangerous type of mining where you're, you're pulling the pillars that hold up the, the roof. And we now have in, uh, in Kentucky a 48-hour notification requirement any operator who's pulling pillars has to notify the state enforcement agency within 48 hours that we're going to pull pillars. The state has to document in that, that in writing, then has to ensure that all miners have been trained on that pillar removal plan. Because what we've found through the years is that almost all accidents on pillar sections, miners have not been trained in the plan. They're just told to get the, get the coal out however they can. 
We also have a requirement now in Kentucky for pre-shift examinations at all surface mines. It's a basic requirement. Uh, the federal law requires pre-shift examinations for hazardous conditions at underground mines, but not at surface mines. Now in Kentucky, we're the only state that has um, that requirement for surface mines. And finally, we, we have a requirement now uh, or a provision where the state can issue subpoenas to investigate um, allegations of unsafe working conditions, regardless whether there's been an accident uh, or an injury. Uh, MSHA doesn't have that subpoena power. Matter of fact, even if there's a mine disaster like the Kentucky Derby, MSHA doesn't have subpoena power unless they convene a public hearing. MSHA as an agency does not have the will or the guts to hold public hearings to find out why miners were killed. Um, they invite witnesses and then tell them you have the right to refuse to answer any question. You can terminate the interview at any time. Now in Kentucky, even without an accident, if we have miners who call and say, you know, we were required to work under unsafe conditions, the state can subpoena those miners and investigate. Thank you very much.